Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So this is the weekly chart of silver, and you can see I've drawn an arrow in here that marks the pure, uh, the point when the Fed uh, gave some Fed speak, indicating there might be another interest rate increase. Uh, I'll give it 50-50 that they'll do any increases at all, but again, this isn't any kind of serious tightening cycle. The tightening that they did was in December, and they haven't done anything, and it's almost June. So they can't really pretend like this is a normal tightening cycle. But uh, that was enough to crack the precious metals markets. You can see that silver was getting right at this congestion area that I've been talking about for some time. Uh, the congestion area with 18 as the bottom, it's right in here. So. Uh, that fits in with the technicals. Now, if we look at the MACD, you can see the MACD on the weekly is starting to roll over. It, For the first time, from all the way back in 2012, it actually got above the zero line. It did a little bit there on the red line, but not both lines. But both lines have recently crossed over the zero line, and now it appears to be rounding over and heading down. So watch this very carefully. I don't think there could be much downside, regardless of what happens. I, don't, I can't really see much more downside from here, especially with some of the news that's coming out of, you know, the LBMA, COMEX, China, etc. cetera, um, uh, sideways maybe, but not much lower. Uh, and then again, on the monthly, uh, you can see that that's still in an uptrend in price as well as an uptrend in the MACD. So they're going to have to take it probably down to $14.00. Uh, to, to actually reverse the the uptrend sort of bottom thing that we put in. Now we've got big moves coming out of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is a chart from uh, BTC-E exchange, but all the exchanges are going crazy. You can see over here on, on Huobi, there's a equivalent of $501, $502 right there. You can see that $502 equivalent on the Chinese exchange and right now we're trading at 3296 and you can see 3345 is that old spike high it's taken a long time to get back to that uh, Litecoin is very very strong I have quite a few of those and uh, it's it's actually even strong versus Bitcoin if you pull up the chart here this is a Litecoin Bitcoin nothing like the huge rally we had in July but uh, where where uh, it actually went up to 0.03 and where Litecoin was up to eight dollars, but you can see it is it is strengthening. Now the big story that uh, everyone's talking about on the uh, alternate exchanges is uh, the the LISC uh, chart, um, and I did actually end up getting into LISC. I got in when it was down like 99%. I think I got in in the 50s. You can't see it on this chart. So I got in down around in here, a little bit below there, and sold. I, I'm pretty sure I sold in the 90s. Yeah, I sold here. So I was close to a double. I ended up buying back and selling up here. And uh, I think I bought there and sold there. But now I've ended up buying here and I'm kind of looking maybe to accumulate some of the coin maybe pull it down into a wallet because I, I think I made about one to two bitcoins in profit just buying and selling the coin but a huge huge volume on the coin uh, it actually overtook ethereum in volume you can see right now today and ethereum is correcting seriously as well there's a lot of strange things going on in crypto they're kind of the cryptocurrencies are kind of being reshuffled right now uh, so Ethereum got up to that $1.1 billion market cap and, and now it's falling. It's down 14% today. Probably some of that went into LISC yesterday. Uh, Litecoin's up 6%. So, um, But uh, that's a real crazy wild ride. You have to be careful. So I'm kind of following my own advice. I let the coin I, ICO and come out and then crash 99% and then I began to accumulate. I was actually intending to accumulate the coin just to try to have some in a wallet, but then I saw it rise so fast as I was buying, I, I couldn't help it. When I got a double, I sold and then tried to buy back in. So uh, kind of fun playing that, but always a risky game. And 
then what can happen to you sometimes is that if you buy too high and you hold and don't sell and take your loss then you're stuck with a waterlogged coin and sometimes it can be delisted and then you get nothing so uh, it's a risky game now let's look at this story from uh, Target this is really really interesting uh, this chart here comes from American Thinker and you know the media is doing everything it possibly can to let us know that in fact uh, I don't have the story right here but the CEO of Target came out and they just had reported first quarter results and the main uh, point that he made in that uh, release was he said well our numbers show that the boycott had uh, virtually no impact on our first quarter results and you know myself and others immediately thought well wait a minute didn't the announcement about the policies happen April 19th and didn't the boycott start April 20th and then probably get legs maybe days later so we're talking April 25th so how far are we left in the first quarter when we're talking about April 25th doesn't the uh, second quarter already start so there's an example of the type of dishonesty that you have with these people obviously the boycott if it if it does impact target sales is going to be reported in the second quarter results not the first quarter results now why is it so important that these people lie about these things why do they why can't they admit the truth oh we were wrong because they cannot admit that people actually have power through the vote that they have with their dollars. This is the same argument that I've been talking about for over a decade with silver. I've been talking about it ever since I found out about Bitcoin. And all of these, it's, it's kind of like the story we always love to tell in the silver community about uh, uh, the Yellow Brick Road and... The Wizard of Oz, and the lesson that was tr that they were trying to teach us with that story, with the silver slippers, and the point was that Dorothy had the power the entire time she was on her journey there. She had those silver slippers, and those silver slippers had the ability to take her back to where she came from, to bring back, to bring things back to normalcy. And that's the power that silver has. It's the power that Bitcoin has. It's also the power that these boycotts have. And that's why they cannot admit that these are effective. Because if they do admit that, then they have to admit that the people have power. And they don't want the people to know that they have the power that they have. So it's very, very important for the media to cover this up. Now, this is on All News Pipeline. It's... I'll say a quasi-Christian news site. It's I don't really like it because it's kind of sensational, but uh, there's some good stories here. Interesting anecdotal stuff here. Uh, not that I'm recommending any of this, but this is some stuff that some readers were recommending and some stuff that they were doing, kind of like uh, uh, the right wing's uh, activists. And here's some suggestions. Call for a national event to shop at Target during a designated shopping week. Shop for everything you'd use for the week and the month. Take it to the register. Ask the cash register to call the store manager. Explain the items will not be bought because of their bathroom policy and to cost some time and all this stuff. Next idea from another reader. Here's what we need to do to target. Everyone who is old enough for a senior discount needs to fill their cart to the brim. Go through the checkout after it's all bagged and say you want your senior discount. When they say no, you tell them they're discriminating against you because you identify as 65 and then walk out. Uh, and another one, uh, for those who are not confrontational, my idea is to go in and absolutely fill the cart with stuff and a lot of frozen food, ice cream, and meat, and then leave it in an obscure aisle and post something like, oops, I have to use the bathroom, guess I'll have to leave. I don't, that's, no, I don't, don't believe in destroying property. And that's very close to stealing. But it is having an effect very, very interesting story. There's no way the mainstream media is going to cover this story. And I wouldn't be surprised if Target would go into bankruptcy and stay in silence uh, rather than risk this transgender agenda that they have. And they have an agenda. We see it now. It's being pushed from the White House. They're very, very serious about this agenda. 
So uh, it's, it's, again, really important. Let me emphasize how important it is that the people have the power. The reason why the people uh, don't exercise the powers that they have is because they're brainwashed. And that's what we are always trying to do is break through the brainwashing, but it's very, very difficult. Now, let's uh, finish up with this energy chart here from Finviz. This is the futures. And I just noticed recently the price of gasoline ticking up. And, uh, you know, uh, yes, admittedly, oil has started to rally a little bit. I think it's up around 50 bucks. You can see Brent crude there, 49.46. Um, but it just I, I did a little bit of math in my head thinking, okay, well, oil's 50 bucks, right? Wasn't oil 150 bucks? And now I'm seeing $2.50 gasoline. Um, did we ever, so if, if, if oil was three times what it is now, shouldn't gas have been three times what it is now? Did you remember seeing $7.50 a gallon gas? No, I don't remember seeing that. So the big question is why has, and I've covered this before, why hasn't gas come down? Well, let's look at the chart of crude. You can see here, uh, look at crude. It, it completely, it made new lows compared to 2008. Uh, so it is very, very low price. But let's look at the gasoline futures. Look at that. Um, much, much higher than it was during the financial crisis. Uh, actually, um, near tops, record tops that it had in 2005, 2006. So uh, totally incongruent, doesn't make any sense. Even more shocking and, and even making less sense than that is the natural gas price. Look at the price of natural gas. Is this accurate? Am I am I reading this correctly? This chart is it correct that the price was thirty and it's now two? Is the price of natural gas down ninety eight percent? I don't know. Maybe these numbers aren't correct, but certainly if this is correct, then shouldn't your gas bill be like ten percent of what it was back in two thousand and six? So. You were paying 50 bucks a month to heat your house. Now you should be paying five bucks a month. <laughs> it doesn't seem to work like that, does it? Why? Well, because it's all rigged. They, they, they've they rigged everything. Uh, the last one here is the only one that actually is, is up. Oh, that's ethanol. And that's the one that they require by law to be 10% of the gas that you use in your car, even though it's the most expensive of any of this stuff so uh, again there's some government insanity there's lunacy caused by the government um, forcing ethanol as a percentage of fuel uh, using our food as fuel uh, the lunacy of these people i mean these people are absolute nut cases don't have time to go into venezuela um, things are just getting worse and worse and worse down there. Uh, murder, everything else. Uh, the, as I've said many, many times, Maduro has to go. Someone has to get rid of that man, period. Uh, there can be reform. Even under extreme leftists, um, most leftists are at least somewhat rational and reasonable, not that man. So he has to go before anything gets better in uh, Venezuela. Brazil, we're seeing just uh, terrible, terrible uh, economic problems. Of course, gigantic f political fiasco. And we also have uh, this fake Zika virus hoax. We have the Olympics and uh, just a terrible situation down there. Puerto Rico, uh, we've got bipartisan unilateral support for this. And I'm going to call it what it is. It's a bailout. And uh, that's not what they're calling it, but they never call it that. It's a control board. But the thing is, is that if the governor of Venezuela uh, actually had any intent of cutting anything, then he could have already cut some things. He could have fired government employees. He could have reduced government employees' pensions. He didn't do that. As I pointed out, he actually paid Christmas bonuses last year. So that whole thing is a farce. I pointed out before that uh, they have no intent on cutting anything. They uh, are just going to try to stiff their creditors, uh, get out of it, and uh, keep everyone on the government payrolls, and uh, probably try to get the U.S. taxpayer to bail them out. Of course, it's not the taxpayer anymore. It's the Federal Reserve. So 
that's what's going on with that, whether it's Paul Ryan, whether it's the National Review, whether it's uh, think, uh, Reason or Thinker magazine. From the right to the left, everyone agrees we've got to have this control board in Puerto Rico. And that tells me that, uh, that the system is, uh, cannot sustain a hit from whatever bond defaults that would come from that. So back to that Bitcoin chart, this is going to be very interesting to watch. Um, this is the first time in a long time that we've had that breakout from uh, that long, long-lived pennant. You can see uh, probably the most important one here is going to be the Chinese exchange. Uh, as I've said many times before, the tendency of pennants is always going to be to break out to the upside. Uh, that doesn't always happen, but that's the tendency unless something outside interferes. That's just a natural market reaction of where you have uh, every time it falls, uh, there's people who think that it's cheap and they want to get in because it's rising. And then that price becomes higher and higher and higher until finally uh, the people trying to get in just don't even let it fall at all and they buy it and push it into new highs. That's when you get a breakout um, into new highs. So this could run very far, very fast. We know that the old high in Bitcoin was 1200 and I do believe that we will surpass that price. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I do believe we will surpass that price. And that will be a double from where we are right now. And we'll talk to you next time.